know why I feel this way Every day I wanna run away I think I'll go back to that place I stay Play on the server the time shot way Hello people, it's Poet And we're back on Time Shot Now, in the last episode that you didn't see As I often start these episodes saying um, I I can't quite remember if it was the last episode. Oh, I should have. You know what? It would have taken me less than two minutes to even check to make sure that I I showed you guys this before. Um, but I'm not sure that I did actually. Cause see the I, I'll repeat it for those who may be new, who don't know, who just might uh, have not been listening. <laughs> uh, is that I often delete footage. What I do is I record. And then, you know, if it if I find that it takes a little bit too long, um, or, I don't know, something like that, where I, I'm not quite into the recording, I don't quite like it, I, I just delete it. And I know that I was talking to Fabe, and, and he was saying that he can't really believe that I do something like that um, when I put so much work into a single episode, sometimes recording up to an hour, an hour and a half, and then I just delete it. But... Uh, I, I guess I don't I don't quite hold a, a a sentimental value or what's the right word I don't hold like a physical relation to the works that I do if I end up cutting an hour of me just chatting with myself although that does sound quite insane um, I don't find that it's time lost I still usually do a lot of work in the episodes that I post so, nothing's lost, but I don't know if I showed you guys this yet, so just in case I haven't, because I, I haven't taken the two minutes to look. Um, this was all available on the World Download, which is on the Reddit. I, I Man, it's deja vu me saying this, but just in case, like I said, uh, this is all available, and in the World Download, I left signs everywhere saying what I would do. Uh, and this is one of the things that I did, was raise this up. Uh, I raised these both up. And now I planted little trees. Well, I didn't really plant these. I manually placed these trees. That's spruce, I think. And this is jungle leaf. Uh, I don't think I have any more junk. Eh! My chest piece is gone! I don't think I have any more jungle leaves left. Um, but I think I might need to get more. Because I do know that... I, I think I want to have at least one, two... Maybe even three, four, if I can fit one over here, I don't know. Uh, I, I want to have a few more of these little tiny features. Because I think it looks really good. I love the way that this new walkway looks. And I'm going to try to figure out how to do like little pathways off the side. Of course, right here I want to do kind of like a Greek entryway. And I don't know quite how I'm going to fit it in there. I might have to take away some of the mountainside. But that'll be okay. So in this episode, uh, what I did in the episode that I cut, I know for a fact, I don't need to check to make sure, because I, I definitely know, is that I started working on these, these pillars a little bit more. Uh, I felt jealous when, when Fabe was doing his live stream. That's something that I can't do. I have attention deficit like crazy. So even me just recording like I am, and talking at the same time and building like I, I can't really focus on building that way I can't I, I've tried it so many times and sometimes I, I get the basics done like uh, when I recorded that last episode I actually did start from about here actually I think I finished I finished all of these pillars up to this point um, all along but then in that next episode that I cut I also started adding on from here up, but I don't have it quite looking like I want it to yet, and I might actually just tear it all down again. Not the whole way down, but this top part I might tear down and kind of try again. Um, and l like I said, why I was jealous of Fabe is because uh, when he was doing his live stream, he was actually building like entire pillars, entire pillars going up. Uh, mind you, they kept kind of the same pattern, and I want to have like Every section this tall will be kind of a different pattern. Maybe repeating every one, two, three, four sections. So one, two, three, four, and that'll be to the ceiling. 
And the other thing that I found kind of interesting is that he decided that he was going to curve his pillars in. And that's exactly what I was going to do with mine is every single one of these come up the wall and then curve like an arch and then cover this entire, the entire ceiling would be one giant arch. And I think that would look just so almost like when you walk into one of those really super old um, Renaissance churches or something like that. And it's just this massive room with this massive arched ceiling. It would just look so epic. I think is that that is the most accurate use of that word ever. I think that is definitely what would it, what it would be. Now, what I also did in that episode is I placed this sign and I welcomed Holdfast to the server. He actually did donate to me five dollars. Thank you so much, buddy. Uh, he donated, but definitely check out his channel. I listed his name as Holdfast Games because that is his channel, and I thought, you know what? Why not a little bit of advertising when we can get away with it. So Holdfast Games, he is now a member of the server, uh, as you guys know, because I did post an episode with him. Um, and I'm really happy to see him on the server. Couldn't ask for a better guy being here. Um, and he, like I said, he's a great guy, obviously. He's donating. 50% of everything donated goes directly to charity at the end of the month. Uh, so that's always a great, great, awesome thing. And let's see, what else? Okay, so, this is what I'm going to do in this episode instead. Last episode, I was building those pillars and trying to talk about something that was really, really important. So I'm going to still try to talk about something really, really important. I got it actually written down now in front of me so that I didn't forget to talk about it. Uh, just kind of like little bullet points, more or less. Which is something, if you know me, if you watch these episodes enough, you would know I never do. Uh, but I, I got it just kind of the quick... Quick Cole's Notes version uh, to myself. <laughs> I made my own notes, Poet's Notes version. Um, just kind of, I'm going to quickly look at it right now. So don't mind that the camera isn't moving too much. But I got to just quickly, let me see. That, that, yep. Have to do that. Uh-huh. Right. Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. So. The thing I wanted to talk about, it's really important, it's actually a bunch of drama started happening the other day on the Reddit, the Minecraft Reddit. Um, now, I I know that Timeshot does have a Reddit, but I, I am not a Redditor, if that's what they, they're called. I don't go on Reddit, I don't read things on Reddit, I don't subscribe to anything really on Reddit. Um, and I think that a lot of the things on Reddit tend to be a little bit drama-esque, you know, if that's if that's the made-up word I can use, is that things are just kind of embellished a lot. Uh, there's a lot of negativity on there. There's a lot of supposition. There's a lot of people accusing others of things that's not true. Um, and it's actually become almost like a, a meme in itself in the way that Reddit Redditors and people who go on Reddit, how they behave and how they act, is kind of, uh, kind of a little bit on the edge of being rude, um, and thinking that they know more than the people themselves. But anyway, the topic, the reason I brought all that up is because I don't necessarily agree with any of the things that were said, but on the other hand, I also do, um, and. While I'm going to talk about this, I'm going to just kind of explore this, which is something that I can right away see. Now, I saw a screenshot on the Reddit. This is actually kind of... It's funny because Reddit, I'm talking about Reddit, and all of a sudden this is a thing that I saw on Reddit. Uh, yeah, that, that sign hasn't changed. I don't know why I looked at it and went, huh? Like it's new. Nothing's new. Now, let's see this. Now, as you guys know, there are pirates on the server or a pirate or or many pirates i don't know if it's a female pirate i don't know if it's a male pirate i don't know if there's uh, a whole team of pirates and apparently there's like a team of hunters or something team of ninjas hunters whatever they are uh it feels like assassin's creed or something like that isn't that like assassin's creed black flag or something and i think that they've made this their pirate hideout i'm not sure I actually kind of think it looks kind of cool, I must admit. 
Uh, I am partial to uh, the way that it looks. It looks totally evil and wicked and awesome, but I, I think that the pirates may have actually made this their pirate base. I'm not sure. Um, as a lot of you guys know, I don't quite use this place a lot. Stop lying, and they've used the wrong form of lying. That's not how you spell it, but... Stop lying to us, pirate. Um, now, I, I do know that this pirate flag, this is a map. I know that MK in her, in her video, um, she also found one. She actually found it live during a live stream and then recorded it after as well. Um, and she was scared to break it, but I just went and broke mine right away. Uh, and it is a, a map. I don't know how you... Can you tell the coordinates from a map? No, I don't think so. Unless 358 is like the coordinate. I'm not sure. Either way, uh, there was a map and apparently all of our gold was stolen. Now, I don't even know that I had gold in this chest. Hey, I have glowstone in this chest too. And iron. Wow. Actually, I'm going to take that too. Oh, I think that's maybe... Did I make it out of wool or stained clay? I hope if the that's wool, right? Yeah, I hope if it was pirates that they've returned my wool somewhere. Cause I don't really have very many sheep to use. I know that I've been pranking Fabe with pink wool and stuff, but that's like that's all that I have. So I I and I don't really have any sheep left, so I hope that they returned the red wool somewhere. Uh, maybe at the top. And I'm thinking that's what I'm going to find at the top. Is like a pirate base or something. Uh, maybe with the red wool in there. Do I want to take that too? Lots of... Lots of wooden stuff in here. Like, I I had no idea. I used those too. And these? I'll have to come back for this. Totally, completely forgot that any of this was here. So I don't even know what's missing. I know that the second that the pirate was found on the server, the first thing that I did was take these. I didn't want to see these go. These are my my precious, most amazing rubber booties ever. The Unbreaking 3 Feather Falling 4 Projectile Protection 4. I love them. They're almost dead. And I actually, ironically, need gold to fix them. Uh, I actually need gold to fix these too. Uh, but I didn't want to see, like, I... I don't know where they're storing it, if we'll ever see them back again, and I just couldn't take the chance, so I, I keep it in my inventory now. Uh, I guess I could put it in the ender chest, never really thought about that. I do have lots more gold in the ender chest, which is why I say I don't know what was in there. It might have been just some like armor chest pieces and stuff from zombies, I think. I'm not even sure, uh, but I wonder what's up here. Hey! I think I... I think I left those. I think. It's just kind of more of the same as what's downstairs. A stone sword? Did I leave a stone sword? When did I ever have a stone sword? I don't think that's my stone sword. Do I see my red wool from here somewhere? Like, is this supposed to lead to the treasure map or something? I don't know why they would make this giant pirate symbol without it being it. Like, I, I know that hold fast space I can see from here. But I think hold fast, we were speaking of him at the starting of the episode. I think he was actually, he joined after the pirates started, I think. Actually, it was kind of in the same, I think it might have even been in the same week. I'm not sure. Um, this is the way that the flag faces. I was expecting to see like this giant skull or something on the rocks. But I don't see anything there. Hmm. Nothing over here either. I'm not, I'm not sure what I'm looking at. Or if I'm even looking at anything. Is that not rendering in? If I do F3A? Hold on. F3A. And I do have it on far, right? Uh, oh, no, I don't. Even. There we go. Far. So now it'll render in yet again. I can't wait for the new rendering. I think it's faster than 
Optifine. People are saying that the new 1.8 rendering is faster. I'm not, I'm not sure yet. But I'm not seeing anything still in any direction. So I'm not sure. I was, I was actually like, I was genuinely believing that I would find like this massive pile of gold at the top of my tower. Or like this massive, I don't know, like a, a, a giant X from the distance where I could see the treasure map. Or, you know, something like that. I was just expecting so much and I'm, I'm just actually pretty disappointed. Nothing, nothing in there. Like I said, I could make it out of stained clay, I hope. I hope that the pirates turn my, my red wool. Actually, I really do. And actually, actually, I'm thinking to myself, if I found someone, by chance, had all of the red wool, I don't think anybody else on the server actually has red wool. Uh, not in here either, there's a little bit more glowstone. Um, oh, and more of that. I'll take apples for good luck. Nom, 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 nom. Um, but if I could find the person who has the red wool, that would actually be the person who is the pirate. I think is actually a pretty good... I'm not going to go through everybody's pink wool. I'm not going to go through everybody's chests or anything like that. But I'm kind of curious now to see, like, who... Who might have... I, I know that I say that I won't go through everybody's chests, but... What? Sky Prig... Sky Prig? Sky Pig Bog... Bog... Oh, man, I just can't talk. Excuse me, Sky Pig. He's back. Sky Pig Bob is back. I say that I won't go through people's chests looking for the red wool. But everybody has blamed... That's definitely not enough of the red wool. Everybody has blamed Code. Huh? 358. Oh, I don't have my map. Is this the same map? <gasps> he actually does have a pirate map in there, but I don't know. I don't know where his, if he got one at all, but I think he did. Oh, well, I don't know. I, I'm just, now I'm just making things up because I know that people came into his house. I think. Either this house or his other house. I was online at the time. I think they were recording it. And something they saw made them think it was code. But I don't know what it is. Maybe the, the fact that he has like three sets of rubber booties. Not sure. Not sure. But I don't think he has the red wool. I wouldn't be surprised if it was maybe... I don't know. It's just... Did Fabe actually manage to get rid of all that pink wool finally? He did. That's actually kind of incredible. Oh! Oh! He forgot some! He forgot some. Ah, oh, amazing. <laughs> uh, anyway, I, I think maybe what I'll do is kind of just kind of... Uh, I was I, I was actually hoping to base my entire episode around finding a pirate base up there, but I didn't. So now I kind of, I don't even know what to do now. Um, I might walk around looking for my wool. Or actually what I could do, even just in preparation for the fact that I, may, I might not see it for a while. I don't know if something's going to be, we have a server meeting coming up. I don't know if something's going to be revealed there. Or what... Um, I don't know if this is like a big prank on me, if it's, if it's like, uh, some giant thing that people are expecting me to solve, because I'm an idiot and I don't think that'll ever happen, but, oh, for example, I haven't talked about the topic of the day at all. I think what I'll do in this episode, since I, I can't really do much of that, is maybe start tearing down those pillars again and then maybe look at building them up again. Somehow, some way. See if I can find a kind of a nice design for them. Might be good. Um, in any case, let's talk about the topic of the day. And it's going to get pretty, 
pretty late now, which is something that I didn't want. But that first part of the episode really couldn't be avoided, I think. Uh, if I didn't talk about it, it would be weird. So, anyway, the topic is not so much Reddit, because I was talking about Reddit earlier, but it's not so much about Reddit. Here's this. Oh, look, I got... These are almost as good, but they're not quite as good. I didn't even remember that I had those in there. In any case, I think I need like 36 levels to fix them both, so I'll take that temporarily. Um, anyway, it's not so much about Reddit. I was talking about Reddit, but it's not about Reddit. It's about what was talked about on the Reddit. And what was talked about was basically um, what happened was someone posted a bunch of links on the Minecraft Reddit to what all these different Minecraft... I got lots of, like, orange wool. I got, uh, anyway, they posted a link to all these different Minecraft YouTubers and basically what they charge to do uh, different server tours, uh, game reviews, and things of that nature. Okay? So, for example, I'll give you guys a good example because you might still not know quite what I'm talking about. Um, I won't mention any names because I don't know the numbers enough to, to call anybody out on them. And even if I did, I it's not really my place to do so. Um, but, for example, I'll use myself as an example, I think is the best way to do it. Uh, someone could come up to me and say to me, hey, I have a new server. It's a mini game server. Uh, we have hide and seek. We have paintball. We've got uh, we got TNT wizards, for example. I'm just throwing out different mini games that I like. Um, but we're wondering what you would want to charge for for a three episode run of our server or something like that. Okay. So, and this has happened to me in the past, where a company has come up to me, or a company, a, a server owner, and asked me to do a series on their server, and they were willing to pay me a set amount to do that. Um, and I've been offered up to $500 in order to do a tour of a server, or a, not a tour so much, but a, an episode of a server. Um and go through and so on every single time I get one and I've only got one maybe I'm not gonna toot my own horn like that I've only gotten them maybe five six times um, and I'm not and it's not flattering in my opinion either uh, when I've got them I turn them down instantly uh, because I don't like it's not so much selling out you know people shouldn't be shocked with people selling out in this day and age, but it's it's just the principle of the matter. I don't like I don't like putting a price on the service I provide. I like just doing what I do, and if I make any money doing it, that's great. But I don't really I don't run my business in a way that you know I have a, a fixed fee that I charge, um, and I think that people who do put that fixed fee. On their videos, it does kind of undermine the the entirety of the industry, and I'll I'll kind of explain that. And actually, it wasn't me who kind of thought about this first. It was uh, oh man, what's his name now? Um, uh, uh 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 oh crap, what's his name? I have to I have to tell you his name. Oh hey 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 oi. Come on. Sky does Minecraft fan dead army come and take over and kill me. Ah, uh, It's the uh what's his name? I'm trying to remember. He's British and he does a bunch of those types of rants. Oh god. I'll link I'll link it in the description. I hope I remember. I hope it I hope dearly that I remember. Um if I don't, someone please just make a mention of it. And I will link their channel. Um, but he actually was talking about uh, this. And you'll find him if you do a search on YouTube, actually. And search for the title. I think the title was... Um, this, this video provided by... Dot, dot, dot. 
which I thought was a very aptly named title. But he came up with the idea that um, if people started charging a premium for their video content, then the game industry, the developers of games, even the owners of servers, would start to feel entitled to a piece of the pie. That uh, it should be a, a give some, take some, give some, take some relationship. You shouldn't just take, 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 and then expect to get everything in return from game developers. And he was saying that if people, the video, uh, video creators, content creators, start charging a premium for their videos, um, crazy amounts, that ultimately the game companies might say, wait a minute, we're not going to pay you to do that. Why would we? Uh, but, or, or, or we could pay you, but... We're going to pay you, but you cannot make money off of our videos now. Um, because we've already paid you once. We're not paying you twice. And that is one of the biggest fears I think that anybody in this industry has. Is that suddenly one day um, we're going to be stuck in a situation where we cannot make the content that we like. Because they're, they're just not allowing us to. Um... So that's kind of why he was saying that, you know what, maybe you guys should simmer down a little bit. And he didn't use those terms at all. But maybe you should think twice about what you're doing. And kind of, you know, if, if you think that you're entitled to money for your videos, then you should maybe reconsider what you're doing. Um, in relation to what happened on the Reddit, my opinion was this is that I make my money on YouTube. YouTube pays me for the videos I make. Uh, nobody, no game company, no server has ever paid me to do anything of that nature. No company has ever paid me to to do a video review of their their game or of their server or anything like that. Because I don't need that, and why would you? Um... We are paid by by YouTube for what we do. If you also get an additional kickback, then your business model is is wrong. And I speak entirely directly to the people who I did see on the list because most of them, I'll I'll say most, but not all. I will be that lenient um, in that this applies to most, but. I know what views I get per month, and I know what I get paid for those views every month. I know the revenue that is accumulated uh, over time from those views. And I know because of that, uh, directly, that they are making enough to survive. And if they then go and charge upwards of a couple thousand dollars to do a single video, then not only are they making enough to get paid, but they're then working for monetary greed. And it's a sad truth, but it is the truth. Um, should they run it as a business because business is fleeting? Maybe, maybe. YouTube is a fleeting thing. It won't be around forever. Uh, the revenue stream might not be around forever. It can change in an instant. Their policy might change and all of a sudden all content creators have to be related to some giant corporate network in order to get paid. That could happen tomorrow. You just never know. So it's very fleeting and you have to make your money fast. You have to make it while you can. I understand that there are people who think that way. I've never thought that way. I think more optimistically, but I do understand the argument. Now... With that said, I've, I've thought about it over the last few days. Whether or not I'm completely opposed to sponsored videos, uh, companies paying people for reviews and stuff. There's two major points that I think people should really look at. Number one is if they are being honest. You know, is it an honest game review? Or is their game review skewed by the fact that they were paid to give that review. And believe me, if they were paid to give the review, the person paying wants a positive review. So I don't care 
whether they say they are giving a positive review, uh, a negative review, positive review, or a positive review because they want one, uh, they want to give it. Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to word that right. They can say, "No, I was completely honest. I really do love the game. It, it is in no way affected by the fact that I was paid two thousand dollars by the company who makes the game. I really genuinely like it." But it's not so much. I their honesty would have to be called into question if they say something like that. Um. Which also makes it difficult because who do you believe? Maybe, maybe they actually did genuinely love the game. But how, how could you ever believe them? You know, it would just be so astronomically impossible to judge that, you know, it's always going to leave that shadow of doubt, unfortunately. Um, but in any case... I had a company approach me, actually it wasn't a company, it was a server, approach me and say to me, uh, hey, we'd love if you did a positive game review of our server. That's exactly how they worded it. Um, and I just, I kind of just laughed about that. Like, <laughs> we will pay you to give us a positive review. Why in the world... I mean, ultimately, that's why they pay, is to not only get a claim, but also for the positive uh, nature of the review. I mean, why would you pay someone to just completely bash your product and tell you tell tell you that it's horrible and terrible and uh, make it make people want to stay as far away from it as possible? Um, mind you, it still does happen. I mean, especially with review copies of games. Which is another thing that I'm going to talk about in a second. Uh, but it's just, I don't know. I i don't feel like, if, if I ever started selling my services, then all of a sudden all of my honesty goes out the window. Even if I still continue to be honest, I know for a fact that people couldn't trust me. And they shouldn't trust me. Why would, why, I wouldn't trust myself, if I'm to be completely frank. If I was paid to do something, anything, uh, a portion of that will always be, in a way, a little bit dishonest in some way. I can tell you for a fact. Because that's human nature. I'll, I'll be elated, maybe, that I, that I was paid to do it. I'll be elated that I'm getting a little bit more than what I normally get. Or something like that. That's human nature. I, won't, I wouldn't trust myself to give a, a completely honest review. So how could the viewers trust me, you know? But maybe that's not what matters. Maybe it's the content. And that's why uh, people like oh, the guy that I, I, whose name I can't remember at all. Oh, man. And it sucks because he's a guy that I actually watch on occasion. But my mind is sometimes all over the place. It's been a busy day, so can't quite remember it. Anyway, um, no, you know what? I'm going to pause it right here and I'm going to get the name because it's just bugging me. It's in my mind for this entire episode and I got to just get it. So hold on a second. Yeah. Okay. I know what the name was now. It's so obvious too. It's like, it's like when you forget the name of a very popular celebrity. Um, and in his right, he is kind of a popular celebrity, but it's like, and then when you know about it, when you finally remember it, it's like, Oh, yeah, duh, how could I ever, ever uh, have forgotten? Uh, Total Biscuit is his name. Uh, and I'm so embarrassed because I've actually talked about him before on this series. Um, but yeah, it's Total Biscuit. Total Biscuit, Total Biscuit. He had some very good thoughts and theories about uh, this. And he was open and honest th with the fact that he was actually paid to give uh, reviews of games in the past. Um, now what he was very good at doing, at least recently, is following the FTC's regulations of this. Now this is something that unfortunately 99.999% of the YouTubers who I've seen doing game reviews and, and things like that, they don't do. And it's being, being honest with the fact that they are paid to do that thing. The FTC, which is a government regulated entity in the United States um, 
they control content online to a, to a point. Make sure that everything is done with the consumer in mind, etc. Uh, and one of those things is to make sure that we know when we're being lied to. So, I mean, that's putting it pretty bluntly. But they basically say, this is in their rules, that you must tell people in your video, in the description, in the video itself, uh, tell people when you have been paid to do the review. Be honest about it. And if you're not honest about it, then that just raises further questions about your honesty in general. So he was honest about it, and he also said, you know, I have no nothing against being honest about it, which is something that I actually pretty... I admired that he was willing to say that. Um, because I know that a lot of companies, a lot of YouTubers out there, um, one that's pretty big, pretty huge. Again, I said I wouldn't mention any names, but I, and I still won't. But I know for a fact that they don't uh, post the links of the server they play on uh, ever unless they're paid to do it. And they don't even consider playing on your server unless you're thinking $25,000 type of value, which is just absolutely insane. Um, in addition to that, you know, like I, I, I've heard of companies uh, or people that do game reviews get paid for it and then they're just completely, they, they just hide the fact that they were paid to do that review and pretend that, you know, it's all positive, everything's great. Um, he said, Total Biscuit said, you know, what's the point? Ultimately, uh, there's the chance that it'll come back to bite you. People will find out in some way and it can only be bad if you've lied about it or hit it. Um, even if you, you didn't really think twice about it, if you're open and honest about it from the very start, you know what? It can only do you good. Um, people won't really question it. And he was very open and honest about the different games and stuff that he had been paid to do. Um, and his thoughts and mine kind of in the same vein. Like I said, I've thought about this over the few days um, that I posted the original and deleted it and, and that kind of thing. And I do agree that, you know what, if you do a game review or a server review and you get paid to do that, as long as you are 100% over the top, and this is the key, being over the top, honest about it, and open with the fact that you were paid to do it, as the FTC kind of suggests that you are, um, as long as you do that, I'm fine with that. So, and that's kind of, that was Total Biscuit's stance on it too, is that, you know what, be over the top honest about it. If you can do that, then why not, why not? It's just, it makes sense to make a little bit of extra money here and there when you can for your services, you know? Your voice is what you get paid for. So, if someone offers you money for your voice, then why not take it? You know, that it just makes sense. Um... As long as you are open and honest about it when it comes to game reviews and content of that nature. Um, now, the FTC also states that you have to be open and honest when it comes to whether or not you got a, a review copy of the game. Or a press copy, as most people that I know call it. Uh, when we get press copies of a game, uh, it basically includes a free pass to play the game. Uh for lifetime and that more than likely is for alpha access because otherwise we buy the games um, and that's kind of the key is that I will be open and honest with you guys right now is that yes I have received press copies in the past for games um, not so much with the intent of doing a game review but when usually I ask for a press copy of a game uh, it is with the intent of, of doing a playthrough of it to either gain some traction for the game or just to check it out to give you guys an open and honest opinion of it. Um, and so I guess in a way, review is kind of the, the key term. Now, Total Biscuit said he didn't understand why the FTC wants to know about that because it's such a, a minuscule portion of, of what we do. And in fact, he said, and I agree, it. Eh, Oh, oh, I gotta go and eat here or I'm gonna die to that simple little skeleton. 
Um, he was saying that if you're a casual gamer, then a f getting a free game is like, wow, I, go I got a prize. I got something special. And in fact, a lot of us give out those free games uh, as something uh, for f special to you guys. But for us, it doesn't have the same meaning. When we get a free game, we don't think of it as, quote, a free game. We think of it, it's like paperwork. And that's how Total Biscuit said it too, is that it's more like paperwork. It's part of doing our business. It's part of the job. We aren't influenced by the fact that we got it for free. It's something that we expect in the industry. Um, and that was his take on it. He didn't understand why. Uh, but I know for a fact that if you're going to do a review on a game, that even something as slight as getting the game for free from the developers can definitely have an impact on it. Um... So that's that's kind of his take on sponsorship and my take as well on sponsorship is that I'm completely opposed to it personally. I would never do it and I think that the people who do it only do it because they want more income. Other side, and I'll repeat this, is that it's not necessarily a bad thing that they want the extra income. And I have nothing against that and that'll I'll be open about. Um, as long as if they're doing a review or some kind of a gameplay content of that nature that they are open and honest about the fact that they either got the game for free or that they that they were paid to either play on the server or do a, a review of the game, etc. Mm. And a lot of the people on Minecraft don't do that. That is really the main issue. So on the Reddit, they were complaining about what the, the, the people charge. And some of them were astronomical prices just to have someone's name brand associated with a certain video. Um, and I won't mention any names, but the list is publicly available on the Reddit. I did also mention on the Reddit, you know, it's very, very subjective because he, he got the entire list from, quote, server owners and managers of the people working for the YouTubers and agents and things like that. And... Never a really direct source. It was all hearsay. It was all very speculative, speculative and very... Uh, you never know if it's really true or not. And often the situation can change. Like, if I don't like you, I'm generally... Or I, if I don't like your product or your server after I've looked at it, I'm probably going to be charging you a lot more than if I was really, like, head over heels in love with it. Um... You know, if if I really liked your game, I might charge you $100 to do a review. If I really hated your game, it's 2000 because here I'm trying to send you a message. So I think that's very speculative, the list in itself. Um, and of course, over time, those lists can morph and change and, and be adapted. You know, if... If somebody offers something in 2012, it's very different than what is offered in 2014 when their subscriber count has doubled, their view count has doubled, etc. So, it's all very speculative. The, the Reddit was kind of just going nuts about it. Um, but again, I'm not opposed to it as long as they're open and honest about it. The thing is, I don't think any... Because it happens so rarely, and that's the sad part about it. None of the people on the list of people charging to do videos, I don't think any of them really put a disclaimer anywhere that says, oh, and by the way, I was I was paid to do a review of this server. And that is something that I was really, really, really looking for. Um, but I, I couldn't find, and that made me sad. And then I found out that Total Biscuit did, coincidentally, like, posted just a few weeks ago, a whole rant about people who don't do that. And that's kind of why, at first I was saying I'm just completely opposed to it, but now, I, after hearing his video, I've kept an open mind. And now I say I am, I am in kind of agreement with it. I, I don't mind people, um, eh? Enjoy cake the pirate! That's my cake! Huh? I think this is a big... This must be a big prank towards me. 
or something. I'm just so confused. Anyway, uh, where was I? I completely, I completely lost track of where I was. But anyway, um, it's just, it's just kind of opened my eyes a little bit about it. I've kind of leaned back on it a bit. And as long as people are open and honest with it, then it should be okay. I still wouldn't do it. I still don't agree with it because I, again, I don't need that monetary greed. But I do know that there are people who, who do or who want it. And you know what? It's their right to want it. You know what? It's a person's right to do well in business and do good in business and and succeed and all that kind of stuff. And our voices, the people who do videos like me, maybe, yeah, maybe they are worth something. There is something about us that you guys enjoy. Us specifically. You could go to the other 100,000 people who do it, but you choose to come here for a reason. What's that worth? Some people have actually figured that out and put a value to that. That was their choice. Do I load them for it? No. That is crazy to do. Why would you hate someone because they charge something for for their voice? I mean, that's their choice. It's their voice. Rhyme. So, with that said, I think I'm going to end the episode there. And hopefully that kind of gives you guys a little bit of an idea of kind of the, the topic of last time. I'm, I'm just going to quickly look over my paper again, make sure that I, I got every point on it. And I l it looks like I did, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, and I think that, all, all things considered, we looked at the pirate thing at the beginning. And uh, even, what the heck was that at the end? It's like the pirate is actually taking over my bases. I think that's what's probably happening. I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything over at this base. But I imagine that's probably going to be next. Anyway, all things considered, I think the episode went very well. Thank you guys for watching. Share this video on Twitter and Facebook. Subscribe if you haven't already. And do all those other awesome things you people do. And we will see you next time on Time Shot. Bye-bye.